Hello, my name is Michael Sloniker, and in this video, I'll be going over the design and format of this course on Canvas. If you have any questions, you can reach me at 502-216-3212. Let's start by looking at the course as a teacher. This is the home page, the first page that pulls up when you get into the course. On this page, you'll find all the announcements, assignments, discussions, quizzes, and folders. Let's look at the example course I have here. I've got all the assignments and discussions organized into modules by week. Starting with week one and going through all the modules, you can see that I posted a welcome announcement. I posted an introduction discussion with student responses. I posted a pretest with three different types of questions. I've posted, going back here, I've posted a video for an interaction video for students to watch. I've posted a student, another student discussion with responses. I posted an assignment for students to submit a document or text response. I posted a PowerPoint document for students to download. I posted another discussion with student responses. I've posted another assignment for students to submit documents or a text response. And I posted a final exam also with the three different types of questions. Now, on the left of the home page, if we go back here, you'll see several tabs. We'll look at the basic ones you need to know. The first tab is home, where we just were. The second tab you need to know is syllabus. This is where you can post your course syllabus with learning objectives, grading rubric, and contact info. The second tab, the, excuse me, the third tab is, where, is grades, where you can see individual students' grades and submissions you need to manually grade. To grade, you can see in a grid pattern all the assignments and which ones have been completed. That's to, shown by this symbol here. You can then click on each box and fill in the grade manually. Quizzes that don't have text submission and are automatically graded will automatically fill in here. The fourth tab, if we go back, is people, where you can see current students and add new ones. Here's where you add students. Click add people and you can add students by email. When you add a student by email, it will send them a link to join the course. The fifth and final tab that you need to know is settings. In settings, you can change the course image, the name of the course, description, start and end date, and the only other setting I recommend you know how to use is a navigation setting, where you can enable and disable which tabs students can see in the course. The rest of the tabs are optional to help divide the course up by assignments, discussions, quizzes, other pages, files, announcements, and modules. There are a few other tabs you can optionally use, such as outcomes to create groups and organize assignments by learning objective. The conferences tab can be used to schedule online meetings. The collaborations tab can be used to use Google Docs or other softwares to have multiple students work on the same document. And the last tab is rubrics, where you can create grading rubrics for individual assignments. Also, if you look on the far top left, you'll find your account. Students will each see their own account. If you look down from there, a few icons down, you have inbox where you, students and teachers can use messaging, which is pretty self-explanatory. Before I show you the student view, let me show you how to add and manage assignments. We'll go back to the home here. Back on the home page, you can either click add module or on the module you want to add to, you can hit the plus icon. You can either click uh, let's see, you hit the plus icon, specify which assignment you want right here on this drop down list. And then you will, so let's say we want to do an assignment, click new assignment, you can name it, and then click add item. I'll show you what it looks like to make a few different ones. So we're on the assignment here, we hit assignment, new assignment, name it something like example, and hit add item. And then we click on the one we just added, click edit, you can add your prompt, add your uh, grades, your submission type, and your availability. So uh, who actually has access to it. And now I'll, show, now I'll show you how to add a discussion. So you would click plus, add discussion, new topic, example, click on it, click edit, add your prompt, and specify how students can interact and respond and hit save. And lastly, I'll show you how to add a quiz. We'll hit the plus, 
add quiz, new quiz, example. Add item, click on the quiz, click edit. And then we can type it, we can name our quiz, add our instructions to what the quiz is actually over, add our timeline, see if we allow students to see their uh, correct and incorrect answers. If we want to add a question, we hit uh, under the questions tab, new question. And then click uh, new question, name it, pick the type of question that it is, fill in the question itself, fill in the answers, select the correct answers, which is indicated by the green arrow. And on the top right, you'll assign your points for this specific question. Scroll down and hit save. Keep in mind all assignments, discussions, quizzes, modules, etc., must be saved and published for students to see them. Now, if we go back to the home page, I'll switch over to student view to show you what students will see when they load up this course. Students see all the tabs, pages, and assignments that you allow them to see and that you publish. Now I'll show you how students interact with different assignments. I'll show you what a quiz looks like. So we'll go through the pretest. They would hit take quiz. They'll see their three different questions. They can fill in their responses, click on whatever they want, type in what they need, hit submit quiz. Now I'll show you a discussion post from a student point of view. So we'll click on our introduction discussion. They see the prompt, they can hit reply and type in whatever they want, hit post reply. They can also reply to one another if you allow that in the settings of the discussion. And lastly, I'll show you what it looks like to submit a text response as a student. So we'll go to the assignment, hit submit assignment. Here's the prompt, allows us to type in whatever we want to say, hit submit assignment. Now, I'll briefly talk about my design of the course and my opinion of the Canvas system as an instructional designer. I designed this course to be as simple and straightforward as possible. Three weeks each with three parts, three discussions, three assignments, two quizzes, and one document to download. The course is simple. All assignments are displayed in the same place. Students simply have to work down the list in order. All information and content is provided. I've included my email for any student questions. It's a short, simple, straightforward course. One reason for this course's simplicity is the Canvas system's reliance on modules. Assignments, quizzes, and discussions must be organized into modules, and you are forced to have a home page with those listed. You can choose to leave the homepage blank and guide students to the individual tabs, but then you have a boring blank homepage. I chose to utilize the homepage and outright disable a majority of the tabs to reduce clutter. I had other colleagues take a look at the course and critique it, and the biggest recommendation I got was to add some more images. And so I added a course image, a profile picture for myself, some memes throughout the course, and a download for the PowerPoint, which is all images, including some memes. While designing this course, I was evaluating the Canvas system Pros and cons, Canvas, when used correctly, can make for some simple, easily accessible and laid out courses like this one. It's easy for students to use and navigate. For teachers, the settings are straightforward and simple. It's quick and easy to add new assignments and to add new students. Cons, the system is very straightforward, user-friendly and basic. All these are great, but the simplicity limits users with more tech savvy skills and experience working with LMS systems. It's a great system that I would highly recommend and I would gladly use again. But if you're looking for more advanced features or the ability to get into the nitty gritty settings and maybe even code, this isn't the LMS for you. For basic courses or those with limited tech experience and knowledge, this would be my go-to LMS recommendation. That's all I have. Thank you for watching.